This Year Nine Geography class are about to do some time travel. The best vehicle, I thought, because we can all fit in it, is the TARDIS. John Lyon and his colleague Nicky Reckless are both former geography teachers who now work for the Geographical Association. Today, the TARDIS has travelled to Silverdale School in Sheffield, where John and Nicky are aiming to show students what life could really be like in the future and what life was like in the past. What we're going to do is travel backwards in time. We're going to travel forwards in time. We're going to visit our grandparents. We're going to visit our grandchildren. We're going to talk to them. We're going to look in their diaries. We're going to see what life was like. And what life might be like in the future. The trouble is, you know what the TARDIS is like. As we're spinning around in space, things never run that smoothly. We've got our diary entries, but the TARDIS has crashed. And they're all over the place. Which is 1970? Which is 2070? I want you to go through the diary entries that you've got. Some of them, they must have been written by your, your grandparents. Some of them by your grandchildren. So what we want you to do is sort them out. First of all, into two piles. The ones that you think that are 1970 and the ones that you think are 2070. Wednesday the 11th. It's cold today, but Dad says you can only heat my room after I put on loads of extra layers. Um, well, it's, it's, either, it's either saying it's really hot in 2017 or it's really cold. It's one of those. Uh, they, were talk, they were talking about putting on lots of extra layers in the video as well. Oh, yeah. Probably. It can't be hot. So which ones are going to do? The grapes are growing well in the farm next door. Pete the farmer says I can have a bottle when he harvests them. Seems like the French wine is suffering because it's too hot. Yeah, they're one saying it's going to grow because it's getting hotter everywhere. It's hot enough in Britain to grow grapes, but too hot in France to grow grapes. So, you so can't I think get like, French wine. Yeah, but we can grow British wine. It's probably be better. Um, in 1970, it would have been that cold. So probably going to be so 2000. Yeah, 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Are they still iffy, the ones that you weren't sure about? Or do they fit nice and neatly now? Well, we were sure about these when we thought there was a now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 1970. Should we go future? Yeah. Is that future? Yeah. Or it could be. Outside. <laughs> we just don't know when we will go into the cold spell. Sounds like a load of cold air to me. Yeah, but they talked about that they can't move stuff because it's CO2 emissions, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Middle. Yeah, well, All right. Middle. Yeah, middle. That, that middle. What about in 2070? Well, because um, they're saying that planes cause a whole load of carbon emissions. They might have higher prices. We are going to a caravan in Cornwall again for our summer holidays. How many people went abroad for their summer holidays last year? Keep your hands up if you flew. OK. Keep your hands up if you flew more than once last year somewhere. Interesting. Because in the future, why might we all end up going to, to Cornwall or to Skeggy again? If you take your car, there's less pollution coming from it. So you've got a smaller footprint. How many of you in your group said that you would like to be more self-sufficient in terms of growing our own food in this country or in this area? Lots of you, wasn't it? Well, so um, instead of importing it overseas and causing more pollution, uh, we're just getting more food and making a smaller carbon footprint on the whole. Was there any others that got 
piles in the middle that they weren't sure of. I got some tangerines for Christmas this year. It's the only time we see exotic fruit like that. Um, probably put it into 2070. Why would you sway towards 2070? Is that a, is that a whole group? Yeah, because um, in 1970 they might still have got some fruit from abroad. It's just in 2070 it might be more of a problem with climate change than. Seems like the French wine is suffering because it's too hot. Now that's good because we're growing it in Britain and so we're not importing it, but um, it's bad for France because the weather's getting too hot and it's the source of income for them. And so they're suffering from it. We're going to concentrate on the 2070 and I want you to look at them again and then put them into piles that fit your scary future, a possible that you don't want, and a preferable sort of future, the sorts of future that you think are, are more reasonable. We've been filtering out rubbish for recycling today. Not that there is much waste. Things aren't pack packaged up like they used to be and everything can be recycled. Just as well, there's no space for landfill anyway. I think that's good because they're recycling. Factory farming is not as good, but the, the artificial food would be a better idea. Sea level rise, scary weather conditions, Taxes too difficult to live there, uh, no, no, severe refugee problems. Taxes I think we'll, we'll try and avoid that for now. What's the world going to be like in 2070 if it's as nice as you want it to be? That's your task. You can draw it, you can write it, you can cartoon it, but I want something in the end that creates the, the world that you'd like to be living in in 2070. Um, I was thinking of drawing sort of a scene where there's not much traffic and there's not much sort of congestion. With the unpredictable weather, there might be snow, more snowball fights because there might be snow in like July or something. We'll, we'll enjoy global warming. Yeah. Even though it would be like 70. But. One with like no natural disasters, with equal weather all over the world, and uh, using less electricity, so less it's natural no disasters. Not as many cars. With the extra sun, better weather, more kids can go outside so they can like play around and have some exercise. So to tackle the obesity problem we have, so that'd be quite good. <laughs> it's a wind turbine, it looks good, it looks like a flower. Hybrid cars? You draw one of those. I'll draw a car. I'll draw one. All right. So as we'd be independent from other countries if we'd grow our own food, there'd be less import and we'd have more money to spend on education. The wind turbines would work, be more useful because of the increased wind that might happen. And um, that's it so far. Oh, um, and solar panels are more effective. You'll have two minutes to tell the, the rest of the, the class the key points on your poster. Um, on the perfect scenario, we've got vehicles run by vegetable oil and stuff like that. We've got like energy saving planes, that are the same as normal planes, but less carbon dioxide because they burn special fuel. Mm. Solar panels and wind turbines on the roofs. We've got summer aeroplanes that don't emit carbon emissions. Have less natural disasters. Use less energy. What we like to see in the future is not obese children because there's quite a lot of obesity. Plants grown in the garden, so it's their own produce. It's not come from overseas. It's not creating carbon emissions. Ride to school more and like go on public transport. We've got crops and stuff that grow well. And if you do have cars, it's going to be hybrid cars, so it saves energy. I see down here, it seems a bit odd, but that's so that we have like low sea levels, so they don't rise anymore. How many people feel confident? Put your hands up if you feel confident that the future is going to be OK. Some of the scenarios that you've come up with are perfectly possible. We would have liked to have done a podcast if we'd had the equipment to do that, but we're going to make a green footprint and we're going to put it into a, a time capsule so that in 2070, whoever it is, our grandchildren, can open it up and see what decisions we were making now to try and make sure that the world that we were visioning, the preferred futures, 
are the ones that happen. I'm going to get you to draw round your foot. Who is it to? Because they don't exist yet. Where will, where will these people live? And what are your hopes for them in the future? What are you going to pledge to do so that their lives are as you would like them to be? How might events today affect their lives? What can you do to help them now and in the future? If you write it, you could take it out in a year's time. Did I do any of those things? Or did I just pretend? Well, to make our preferred world happen, we have to be doing these things, not saying them, pretending and doing nothing. Because we're not just talking about a geography lesson here, we're talking about your future, your grandchildren's future, it's real. It's not difficult, is it? And it's not scary. When you get these things that are predicting the worst case scenarios, they look horrible. But they're working on a no change scenario. <laughs> what I hope you take away from this lesson is that the actions that you've got on your footprint that you've drawn will make a difference. This is a lesson that has an impact beyond sitting in the classroom, if you make it so. This is real geography. This is geography where if you go and act on these pledges, the possible futures will be turned into your preferred futures and we'll have a world that's a better place to live in in 2070 for our grandchildren. We can all make a difference. So, what did the students really think about their lesson? It was interesting. We learned a lot of like geographical information that we weren't too sure on before. Like, I knew what climate change was, but I wasn't sure of all the intricate reasons and like how much we can actually do to stop it. Um, I thought the whole Doctor Who futuristic style was quite interesting and it really makes you get into the whole theme of the future and the past and what could happen. When we wrote a letter to our grandchildren on our foot, uh, I thought it was clever because it makes you think about in the future how they might feel and how we can affect their lives. What we wanted them to do in part was think about the future. It was this element of the future not being a fixed definite, then there are possible and preferable futures. We have to have them considering it now because it becomes embedded in their lifestyles when they're younger. They can then understand more easily the impact that they can have and making change in small ways, but changes that get them towards a preferred rather than a possible future. I think we had in mind from the beginning that we didn't want them to be scared by climate change because there's a lot of talk that it's all doom and gloom and I think young people sometimes feel scared that they're not going to have a future so we wanted to make certain that they left the lesson feeling positive and they could make positive changes for a better future rather than a worst case scenario future.